and the experience of having it. And when there's a vibrational match between your energy and that future that you want to experience, now if you're creating from the field, you actually don't go anywhere to get it. Mm. You actually draw it to you. Mm. So the, here comes the synchronicities, <laughs> the serendipities, the coincidences, yes. the opportunities. The energy of the heart actually informs the brain to move into these beautiful, elegant states of alpha brainwave patterns, mm. coherent alpha. And that's saying, what's the next dream? What is it? The next? What's the next opportunity you want to experience? That's a state of creation. So now you have a Wi-Fi signal. You got a coherent brain. That's a directive. That's a signal out. And you got this coherent heart. That's what draws it to us, right? You combine those two, and if there's a vibrational match between your energy and that potential in the quantum field, and you're feeling abundant, and whatever your brain associates with being abundant, that's your call. That's what the creative process is. This is the creative center. The brain, the frontal lobe, actually says, what would it be like to be creative or, or abundant? I don't know what it'd be like to be abundant. Well, then go read a few books on people <laughs> who, who actually became abundant and realized it wasn't a glorious process. Mm. They failed miserably. They, let, they got betrayed. They learned a lot of lessons, but they persevered. And what are the qualities of that person that you could embody? That, that's the key, right? Because it's, it's not about wealth. It's who you become. Right, because people think it's about their wealth, but it's the becoming process. It's the overcoming. But attracted that, right? Of course. So then, so then, you got to turn the battleship around because most people say, "I can't feel grateful for my wealth because it hasn't happened yet." That's the hypnosis, waiting for the experience to happen to feel grateful. Well, that's Newtonian. That's three-dimensional reality. That's cause and effect. The quantum, you got to feel it in order for you to experience it. Okay, so this heart becomes like an amplifier. And it sends that signal out, and that frequency can carry the thought of your abundance. Can't, suffering cannot carry the thought of your abundance. Lack cannot carry the thought of your abundance. It's, it's a different frequency, right? We feel different feelings like suffering. We think different thoughts, right? So, so people can say, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, all they want, but that thought is never making it to the body because it's stopping at the brainstem because the body's saying, I'm miserable, I'm unhappy, I'm in lack. Right, so, so the affirmation doesn't work, right? Okay, so let's go one step further. Yes. So if you practice this, and you actually understood, you know, well, well we teach this pretty well, but if you, you, if you learned it just like learning how to play handball, or mm -hmm. learning how to hit a golf ball, learning how to dance a song, so if you just practice the form, you got really good at it. If you were doing it properly then, what would be the outcome? The experiment of being abundant would be that you would have to feel that feeling. It's so good at doing it with your eyes closed. You gotta do it with your eyes open. Now why? <laughs> because if you're feeling the feelings of your emotions, of your future, you're no longer looking for them. Because you you're in the future now. Your, your body is so objective that it's believing, it's living in that reality yes. where you are abundant. And as long as you feel that emotion, you're not separate from it any longer. You're no longer in lack. You're no longer looking for it to occur, occur. Say, why hasn't it happened yet? If you're feeling abundant, why would you look? Right? We would, right. You wouldn't, so, so, so then our job then is to be able to maintain that modified state of mind and body. So, okay. So does that mean like you should check your bank account tomorrow and see if there's a half a million dollars in it? No. You keep tuning into that potential, and then here come the synchronicities. Yes. What's that? That's feedback in your environment. It's the universe is saying, hey, Lewis, whatever you're doing, all of a sudden, <laughs> we are starting to create, right? And I think it's so important for people to remember that they're the creators of their lives instead of the victim of their lives, mm -hmm. right? So the victim is saying, I'm feeling this way because that person or that circumstance or I don't have any money is causing me to feel this way. This is my relationship with money. What that really means is I'm using my lack to reaffirm my dependency, my addiction, my conditioning. That's my relationship with money is that I put my attention on money because I don't have it. So their relationship with money is of course built on lack. And so when they don't have it, they feel bad. What they're really saying is, my outer environment, my reality is actually controlling the way I feel and the way I think. So Lewis, why are you in a good mood today? Things are going good. Why in a bad mood? Things are going bad today. So 
This unconscious program of victimization is saying that, that, that we're, we're allowing our environment to influence the way we feel and the way we think. Isn't that, isn't that what victimization is? And, and the stronger the emotion we have to our lack, the more we put our attention on the fact that we don't have it, right? Yeah. And so then the person has forgotten that they're creating reality because what they're creating is lack. And they're creating more of it. And they try harder and they force harder and they control and they're more, more exhausted and their more. body's tired and, and they're breaking down and, right so so the experiment then is let's try it another way let's create from the field instead of from matter get a coherent heart get a coherent brain relax in the heart and energy moves right in the brain we've measured this a thousand times and all of a sudden the person moves into these beautiful elegant brainwave states where they're super creative right mm -hmm. so the, the longer you're conscious of that energy the more you draw that future to you. So then, what does the synchronicity mean? It means whatever you're doing inside of you is producing that effect outside of you. Pay attention to what you did Keep and doing do it again. Yeah. So generate a little bit more abundance. Just do it for an experiment. Now, when the synchronicity happens, do you think you feel suffering or do you think you feel a little excitement? You feel inspired, right? Mm -hmm. So then that synchronicity is saying, use this energy, use this feeling. It should be easier for you to feel this now and go back and do it again. Mm -hmm. Keep the experiment going. And here comes the promotion. Here comes the here comes the email. Here comes the person you meet at the right time. Yes. Right? Well, we have something happening here, and then that that becomes the momentum, right? So then we generate abundance. That's that's how we do it. And the relationship it doesn't just happen by accident. We generate. We generate abundance, right? So then, if you have an hour meditation where you're tuning into your abundant future but then you're spending the other 15 hours a day in lack. Don't expect anything to change. You defaulted, mm -hmm. you're back to the old energy. And if you say it's that person or that circumstance or that bank account, I'm gonna say you're back to the unconscious program of being a victim, right? Mm -hmm. so, then, so, then, so then let's go a step further. If your personality creates your personal reality, and it does, and your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, then the present personality who's listening to this podcast has created the present personal reality called their life. Nothing big there. Which means if you want to change your personal reality, you're going to have to change your personality. Right. Nothing changes in your life until you change, right? Mm -hmm. So then 95% of who we are is, is on autopilot, right? It's, it's a programmed thoughts, hardwired thoughts, beliefs, perceptions, unconscious habits and behaviors. and really, really emotional responses that tend to be really knee-jerk and automatic, right? So if 95% of who we are is a set of unconscious programs, then the first step to change is becoming conscious of those unconscious thoughts. Now, people think when they sit down to do the work and make their change, that they're, they're doing something wrong. No, those thoughts have to come up. I can, I'm not worthy, it's never gonna work. But the person who's truly persevering towards their abundance realizes just because they have that thought doesn't mean it's true. They're curious on what's on the other side of that thought. Ah, well that's just the thought, right? Mm -hmm. And nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together. So you keep moving past that thought, it, gets, it has less and less power over you.